do I reach these kids? Sweet from them, honey, baby. Baby, man, sweet on me. Hi students, how are you today? You having a good day? You know, time is going by, isn't it? We've been at home because of the coronavirus now for many weeks. And it's already May. It's already May and soon the end of school will come for this year. Well, you know, the 20th of May, May 20th, is a very special day all around the world. This is called World Bee Day. World Bee Day was made by the United Nations. Okay, What are the United Nations? They're all the countries of the world. All the countries of the world uh, get together and they try to be peaceful with each other. Instead of fighting, they try to talk to each other and have peace. Uh, they also try to help each other when there's earthquakes, when there's no food, uh, when there's great big dangers for the world. Um, so with the coronavirus uh, right now, the UN, United Nations, is working on helping all the countries of the world in their efforts so that people don't get sick. So World Bee Day, all countries of the world have decided bees are so important. Without bees, the world would be a sad, sad, sad place. So we're going to celebrate World Bee Day on May 20th. Well, let's learn some facts, facts about bees. Look at this beautiful place. This is called a meadow. So many flowers, eh? <laughs> well, a honeybee weighs 0 0.1 grams. They don't weigh very much. How much is a gram? How much is one gram? Hmm. Well, one gram is about the same as a paper clip. If you put a paper clip in your hand, you can hardly feel it. It's so light. But one gram, that's how much one gram is. Or one gram is the same as, um, you know, a $5 bill or a $10 bill or something. Put that in your hand. That's about one gram. So if one gram is about as heavy as this, one gram, if you had 0.1 grams, 0.1 grams, that's how much one honeybee weighs. Well, then you'd need 0.1 Point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point 0.9, and then you'd have one gram. So you'd have ten bees to make one gram. That's how much um, a bee weighs. So they don't weigh very much, do they? They're little guys, but they're very important. Without bees, there would be very little food or flowers in the world. Look at all these bees. They're on the flowers. They're doing a very important job. This job that they're doing, what's it called? Bees are pollinators. They are pollinators. Pollinators. What is a pollinator? Hmm. Well, look at this flower. A pollinator, here's a bee, moves pollen from the stamen to the pistil in a flower. So here's the flower, and the bees move pollen from the stamen to the pistil. These, are, these red words are new words, aren't they? Well, see on this bee here, all this dust on his body? That means, uh, actually, I think this is a she. That means that this uh, bee is covered in dust or pollen. The pollen is dust um, from the flower. And the bee takes the dust from the flower and moves it around on the flower. 
So here's the word stamen, stamen, and here's the word pistil. This is the, these are the stamen here, these white ones. The pistil is right in the center of the flower. Okay, so the bee goes on the flower and moves the pollen from the white ones, the stamen, to the green one, the pistil. So here she comes. She goes all over here, and then she moves to here. And that's how you pollinate a flower. You move from the stamen to the pistil. Well, what's this called? What's this yellow part of the flower called? Do you remember? That's right. That's the stamen. The stamen, this is the male part of the flower. The symbol here is for male or boy, right? What's this part, the pink part? If this is the stamen, this must be the pistil, yeah. And if this is the male part, then the pistil is the female part, the female part, yeah. So the bee moves from the stamen, the male part, to the female part. And that's how you pollinate a flower. Simple. What about this flower? Can you figure out what this is right here, the yellow? What is that? Hmm. That is the stamen, yes. That is the male part of the flower. Okay, well, what about this part? What about the purple part? What's that? That's right, that's the pistil. So here's the male part is the stamen, and the female part is the pistil. There comes the bee, she goes on the stamen, and then she moves over here to the pistil, and she has pollinated the flower. What about this flower? This blue arrow, what's it pointing at? That's right, that's the pistil. That's the female part of the flower. And what are these long ones? What are they called? What are these? Yep, that's the stamen. So the bee moves from the stamen to the pistil. And that's pollination. Bees pollinate flowers. Look at this bee. So covered in pollen, all those little tiny bits of dust that's from the flower. Pollen is dust or powder made by flowers. It's usually yellow. So here's the dust or the powder all over the bee. He likes that though, or she likes that. Pollen can make you sneeze too. Many people have allergies, uh, like their eyes go uh, all watery, and their nose they get it gets tickly and it makes you sneeze. Or uh, maybe your nose it gets runny and you have to blow your nose. Sometimes even people's throats uh, get very dry and sore. So some people have allergies because in the spring, uh, this is when all the flowers start coming out, right? When pollen is moved from the stamen to the pistil, it is called pollination. See pollen and pollination? The two words are very similar, right? Pollen is the dust. Pollination is the action of the bee who moves from the stamen to the pistil. Flowers make seeds through pollination. So without pollination, there would be no seeds. And without seeds, there would be no, well, there wouldn't be much of anything, would there? Look at this bee. Here she comes. She's going to go to this strawberry plant. This is springtime. Here's the strawberry flower. I used to have so many flowers like these on my strawberry farm back home in Ontario. The bee has to go from the 
stamen to the pistil on this flower and this flower and this flower, she'll go all over to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of flowers. And then when she does this, she makes strawberries. These strawberries won't come unless the bee comes. Unless the bee touches the flowers, the strawberries will not grow. Where are the seeds on the strawberry? Are they inside or outside? Yeah, they're on the outside, outside of the berry. Mm -hmm. Little tiny seeds, so many of them. So without the bee, we would have no seeds for more strawberries, and we wouldn't have strawberries. It'd be a very sad world. Look at this bee. Where's she going? This is a beautiful plant. This is an apple tree. These are apple blossoms. My farm, the house that I grew up, was surrounded by apple trees and pear trees and cherry trees. I didn't like the smell of apple trees, but I love the smell of uh, cherry trees. And pear trees are stinky too, but cherry trees are nice. Anyway, here comes a bee. And wh when the bee lands and she pollinates the flower, we get apples from it. Now, where are the seeds in the apple? Or on the outside or on the inside? Yeah, they're on the inside. So some fruits, some vegetables, um, they have their fruit, their seeds on the inside, and some fruits and vegetables have their seeds on the outside. Yep. So there's the stamen, and there's the pistil. The male part, or the stamen, makes pollen. Okay, so that this part here makes the pollen. The female part, or the pistil, makes seeds with the pollen. But unless the pollen goes from here to here, there will be no seeds. Without pollinators, that's what bees are, without pollinators, there would be no seeds. There would be no fruits or vegetables. We would not have food to eat. There would be very little food to eat. They, I, I read somewhere that three quarters, three out of four things that we eat, all the fruits and vegetables and everything, they wouldn't be around in the world without the bees. So we would be pretty hungry. Hey, Mr. Steel, what about cows? Can't we just eat animals? Bees don't have to pollinate cows, right? Well, what do cows eat? Yeah, that's right. Cows eat these. Cows eat alfalfa. And without the bees to come to the flowers on the alfalfa, the alfalfa won't grow. And the cows won't have anything to eat. And so even all the animals that we might eat, we wouldn't be able to eat the animals because the animals can't live without the bees. None of us can live. See that? Hmm. So bees are very important. They make most of our food. But what else? What else besides making our food do they do? First of all, who is more rich, this man or this bee? I'm so rich. I have ten billion dollars. Ten billion. That little bee, he has nothing. Who's more rich? Well, Mr. Trump, President Trump is uh, lying there. Forbes magazine, he actually, actually says he only has maybe one to three billion dollars. But what about that B? 215 to 265 billion dollars worldwide. That B is way more rich than President Trump. Hmm. Bees make almost all of our food. They also help people around the world have 
money. Yeah, because without bees, we wouldn't be able to have food. We wouldn't be able to eat food. We wouldn't be able to sell food. $215, $215 billion is a lot more money than Donald Trump has. But bees do something else very special. Can you guess what it is? What else do they do? Honey. <laughs> That's right, honey. So here's a, a, a man who harvests the bees. That might be a woman, actually. Uh, she goes to the beehive, and she puts on a special suit so the bees can't sting her. Um, and she collects the honey. She pulls the trays out that all have all the honey inside of them. She gets the honey and she sells it to you and to me. So bees make lovely, beautiful, tasty honey. And we put honey in so many things. Look, these are beehives. One, two, three, four, five beehives. On my farm, we used to have beehives like this. The bee man would come by our farm and he would leave uh, hives and we would have the hives because we needed them for our strawberries and our tomatoes and our peppers and our eggplant and she's everything we grew on the farm needed bees. One hive will make more than 50 kilograms of honey in a year, 50 kilograms. So that's about the same weight as an octopus. <laughs> Not that you've ever held an octopus, but if you were to pick an octopus up, it's about the same weight as how much honey bees will make in one hive in one year. You know, there are 40,000 to 45,000 bees that are, live in one hive. 40,000 to 45,000 bees live in one hive. Wow, that's a lot of bees, right? There she goes. Honeybees visit about 2 million flowers to make one pound of honey. One pound. That's a lot of flowers to make one single pound of honey. A pound of honey is about the same weight as a can of beans. A can of beans is about a pound. So to make that much honey, two million flowers. That's a lot. To make one pound of honey, bees must fly a distance equal to two times around the earth. To make this one pound of honey, all those bees all together, they have to fly around a distance that's the same as going around the earth twice. Wow. I thought walking down to the store was a long way. But bees are very busy. Well, how do bees make honey? I can't make honey. Let's find out. Honey is made from nectar, nectar. So there's the inside of the flower, right? Here's the um, stamen, here's the pistil, and the, the nectar is all in here. The nectar is like the juice. It's the juice of the flower, and they the bees go to drink it. Not just bees, though. Also, look at the hummingbird. She'll go and she'll drink the juice from the flowers. She is also a pollinator. Same with this butterfly. Butterflies love nectar from um, flowers. And they have a long tongue that goes in a, in a, it goes coiled up like this. And then when they go to the flower, they, whoop, they flop it down and they use it to eat the nectar. So she is a pollinator as well. Bees use long tongues to slurp up tiny sips of nectar. Slurp. Tiny sips. Take tiny drinks of nectar using their long tongues. See, there's the bee's tongue. And there's the honey. Or the nectar, I guess. Sorry. 
and here's the tongue again. Yeah, rah. my tongue's not as long as that, I guess. The nectar goes into the bee's stomach. Hmm. How many stomachs do you have? First of all, can you do that? That's hard. Rub your belly and pat your head at the same time. If you can do that, you should be a basketball star. How many stomachs do you have? Yeah, you have one. Bees? Bees have two stomachs! Oh. Their regular stomach is here. But they have a special stomach for honey. The special stomach for honey. Two stomachs. Hmm. So a single bee might have to drink from more than a thousand flowers to fill its honey stomach. Each bee has a tiny little honey stomach, but they have to go around a thousand flowers before they can fill their stomachs. These bees are very busy, see? Buzzing around. A full honey stomach can weigh as much as the bee itself. Wow. So a bee weighs 0.1 grams. So it's got to fill its stomach with another 0.1 grams. So a bee that's full of honey weighs 0.2 grams. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? Like when I go and eat and I weigh, there's me, I weigh 200 pounds. If I go and have a meal, I don't eat the same amount of food as my body, right? The food goes in my stomach, and it's if I eat that much food, which none of this food would exist without bees, there would be no food, but it goes in my stomach. It doesn't, I don't eat 200 pounds of food, but if I was a bee, a 200 pound bee eating food, I would weigh 400 pounds by the end of my meal. Wow. I'd be big, big. So the nectar in their stomachs starts to become honey. Okay, so the bees take the nectar, they drink the nectar with their tongues, goes in their stomach. It starts to become honey inside their stomachs. But to make honey from nectar, they must throw it up. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. The bees throw up the honey. Blech. Another th way to say that is the bees vomit honey. Blech. The bees puke honey. Blech. The bees barf honey. Blech. So there's a whole bunch of different words you can use in English. Throw up, vomit, puke, barf. I hope you don't have to use any of them, but Everybody throws up now and again. Ugh, that's kind of gross. Next, the bees vomit into each other's mouths. I'm not making this up. They actually throw up into each other's mouths. And then they pass. This guy will pass his barf to that guy. And that guy will pass his barf to this guy. And this guy will pass his barf to that guy. And, and so on and so on and so on. Kind of sick, right? They pass the vomit along. This turns the nectar into honey. Hmm. Honey is bee vomit. How about that? Blech. Gross, right? Maybe it's good. After that, they throw up the honey again into the honeycomb. So the last bee, he goes and blah, he throws it up into the honeycomb. Honeycomb are these hexagons this is where they store their honey some of them they put honey in and other ones they put eggs eggs in that where the babies go oh, that's gross too well the honey is still very watery see it it's all in these in the honeycomb it's still very watery so the bees flap their wings to make it thicker so they get their wings and they go and they it's like a fan and the fan will dry out the honey. It will make it uh, more thick, thick. 
Now, there is a sad problem for bees today. What's the sad problem? It's a big problem in the world. The honeybee is getting sick. The number of bees in the world has gone down by half over 50 years. 50 years ago, there were twice as many bees. Half the bees are missing. This is dangerous. They're all getting sick and going away. So many honeybees are dying over the winter. And even in the summer, so many honeybees are dying. In 120 years, the world has lost half of all the kinds of wild bees. You know there are many different kinds of dogs, right? There's big dogs and little dogs. There's uh, Dachshunds, there's hound dogs, there's bulldogs, there's so many different kinds of dogs. Same with bees. There's so many different kinds of bees. Well, in the last 120 years, half of all the different kinds of bees in the wild have disappeared. It's very sad and it's dangerous. This is called colony collapse disorder or CCD, CCD. This is a dangerous problem. So here's the hive, right? This hive is a colony. This co It's a colony. It's a community. A colony is a community of bees, okay? So this is a colony. Collapse. Collapse means to fall apart or stop working. So the community of bees that live in the hive, something has happened to them. The whole family of bees, all the, all the group is all falling apart and they've stopped working. It, hasn't, it doesn't work properly anymore. And they have a disorder. The disorder means it's a sickness or a disease. So a disease gets inside of the colony and it makes the colony very sick and not able to work, all right? And all the bees die. This is very dangerous. This happened on our farm. Uh, before I moved to Alberta uh, on our farm, many of our beehives died of colony collapse disorder. It was a terrible problem because without the bees, we didn't have strawberries. We didn't have tomatoes. We didn't have all our fruits and vegetables. So here's all the dead bees, right? Here's the beekeeper. He's got his suit on, but he's very sad. And the bees are all dying and they're laying on the ground and he picks their bodies up, right? Colony collapse disorder, CCD. Why? Why are all the bees dying? Pesticides is one reason. There are three big reasons I'm going to teach you, but one of the big ones is pesticides. This man here has poison in this bucket on his back. And this is a hose. And you pump air into the bucket that makes it press pressurized. And then when he presses the button, all this poison sprays out. And he sprays poison on the crop, on the, on the ground on these plants to protect them from bugs that will make the plants sick or maybe bugs that will eat the plants, right? So on our farm, we had many, many bugs that hurt our vegetables and we used to spray on our farm to keep the bad bugs away, okay? But bees get sick when they are collecting nectar, drinking water and pollinating flowers. So the bee is flying around and he might, he might land on the plant where the where the um, the spray is, and it gets all over them. So the spray gets on them; it sticks to the pollen on their bodies. All right. So then what happens is the bees got sp spray poison on them. They take the spray home, and it makes the other bees sick too. Okay. And the spray can also make the bees forget how to get home. 
how to go home. They get so sick, they can't remember how to go home and they get lost. So it's very, it's not healthy for bees. When we sprayed, we always sprayed late, 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 late at night when all the bees were sleeping or early, 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 early in the morning before this, the bees woke up. And we only sprayed when there was no wind. Um, but still, it's very dangerous. Even though you're careful as a farmer, uh, these sprays, there are certain kinds of sprays that are deadly to bees, deadly. So why are all the bees dying? Pesticides. But also, number two, their food is all the same. Look at this beautiful field of flowers. Are all these flowers the same? No, they're all different, right? All different kinds of flowers. This kind of a field, students, is wonderful for bees. Bees love a field like this because there's so many different kinds of food here. But this is not usual. This is very unusual to see on a farm because now farms look like this. What's the difference between this and this? Yeah, that's right. This is all one kind of plant, all the same flower. So for as far as you can see, this is the only kind of pollen, the only, sorry, the only kind of nectar that a bee could eat would be this kind of nectar, all right? So this is called monoculture farming, monoculture farming. And it's not good for bees. This is canola. This is how, what lots of the fields in Alberta look like. So, you know, bees, they're like you and me. We, they like to eat many different things, right? One night, maybe this, another night, maybe this. And then you, if you eat different kinds of food, you can eat a well-balanced meal right? And your body's strong and you stay healthy when you eat different kinds of food. Bees are the same as us that way. Imagine if you could only we eat one thing, the same thing every day. Today's special, same as yesterday. You go to the cafeteria, there's nothing in there but the same thing every day. The bee would get sad and the bee would get sick. His or her body would not be strong. Right? Think of it this way. Do you like to eat at McDonald's? Yeah, sure, right? Maybe you like to eat a burger or maybe you just like the french fries, right? But imagine, what if you could only eat at McDonald's? What if the only food you were allowed to eat was McDonald's food? How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel sick? <laughs> would you be healthy? No. So this is what we have done to bees by having monoculture fields. They only have one thing to eat. They have to eat McDonald's every day. So those are two reasons why bees are dying. A third reason is parasites. Parasites, there's a new word. A parasite is a living thing that lives inside another living thing and eats it. So it's an animal that goes inside of another animal and eats it from the inside. Ugh, right? So look at, here's a dog. Um, dogs sometimes get fleas, ticks as well. Fleas and ticks are kind of parasites, right? So they go and they go down on the, the dog and they go inside of the dog's fur and then they bite the dog and then they suck the dog's blood, right? And the dog gets very itchy. So sometimes when you see dogs going itching, that's why they're itching sometimes is because they have fleas or maybe they have a tick. And these are called parasites. So you have to, um, you have to watch for these on your dog, right? They can make your dog sick. This dog here, the parasite that he has isn't on the outside of his body. This dog has a parasite on the inside of his body. This dog has what's called worms. There are worms in the dog's belly, inside of the dog's intestinal tract. 
So maybe the dog was out walking and she saw a dead bird or maybe a pile of poop. Some dogs like to eat poop and they eat it. But then inside of the poop or inside of the dead bird, there were little worms, little bugs. And the bugs go inside of the dog, but they don't die in there and they live in there. And then the, the dog gets very uncomfortable and the dog has to scrape its bum against the floor trying to get the worms out of its bum. It's very bad. So you have to make sure when you have a dog that you keep them away from dead things on the ground or from eating poop or and you should always give them there's a pill that you can give your dog and it helps to prevent it helps to stop parasites okay so dogs can get parasites all different animals can get parasites people can get parasites okay so can bees this is a very dangerous very dangerous parasite for bees it's called a varroa destructor mite or just a mite okay they're very tiny a bee is small but a parasite small very small they will get on the bee right um, mites get on a bee the bee takes them to the hive so the bees out getting the flowers and getting the nectar a mite gets on the bee and then the bee flies back to the hive. The mites spread everywhere by hiding with the baby bees. So the bees put the baby bees inside of these cells, inside of the inside of the honeycomb, right? Where it's they sleep and they grow. The mite is inside of there and it grows up in uh, next to the next to the baby bees. And then when the baby bees pop out and they're ready to fly out start flying and things the the mite comes out and then the mites they go everywhere all through the whole hive right so uh, they hide with the baby bees and they also attack adult bees they go after the adult bees the grown-up bees the mom and dad bees they make the bees wings too small so they can't fly the bees get a sickness the grown-up bees they're their wings get all small like this. See this bee, he's so big, but he's got these little tiny wings. And this is because of the mite. The mite makes the baby sick and it makes the grown up sick, it makes everybody sick. And without being able to fly, can the bees go get honey? No, the bees can't get honey. And so the whole hive will starve. All the bees will starve and they will die. Well, what can we do to help? One thing we can do to help is plant more different kinds of flowers. So these are beautiful wild flowers in Waterton. Really the best kind of flowers to have in your garden are wild flowers. Flowers that grow natural, naturally. They're part of Alberta. They grow here, just nature grows them. People don't have to plant them. Bees love those. You can also plant other kinds of flowers, right? So this is a backyard garden. Here's a natural wild garden. But bees, if you want to help the bees, plant lots of flowers. Plant flowers in different kinds, different kinds so that early in the spring, there will be flowers. And then early in, late in the spring and then early summer and then late in the summer and even in the fall. You have to try to make it so that bees have lots of flowers the whole time so they can have lots of different kinds of food, right? Not just one kind of flower, many kinds. Okay, another thing we can do to help, take care of wild bees. Wild bees, bees in nature. So here are wild bees. They don't grow in a box. They don't live in a box. They live in nature. They live on trees. Many bees live inside of trees. So if there's a tree that ha maybe it's dead or it's an old tree and it has a hole in it, that's good for bees, right? Lots of people say, oh, that's an old dead tree. I should cut that down. You know who loves those trees? As many kinds of birds love those trees. Woodpeckers love those trees. Different kinds of animals, squirrels, but bees. Bees love those trees. So if you can find a place in your garden where you can have a few dead 
a few dead things for bees to live in. That's excellent. Not all bees live in trees or boxes. Some live in holes. Look, here's a hole in someone's lawn. These kind of bees are like bumblebees. Bumblebees are great big fat bees and uh, they love to live underground and their nest is under the ground. Uh, when I was a boy, our steps going down from the back door, underneath the steps, there was a nest of bees like this, nest of bumblebees. And I used to sit on the steps when I was a boy and I used to watch them come in and out of the, underneath the steps. It was a happy thing to have bees under there. They never, bees won't hurt you. Okay, what else can we do to help? What can we do to help? Don't use pesticides, okay? Pesticides kill bees. They kill them. Good bugs, these are good bugs. Besides bees, there's bees, but there are many good bugs. If you use sprays, if you use pesticides in your garden, they will kill the bad bugs that you don't want, but they'll also kill the good bugs. All these bugs and the worm, they will get sick and they will die and they will go away as well. All right, so spraying kills them and poisons your lawn. So let's try not to use pesticides, okay? If you do, if you don't, then the ladybugs will come. Uh, they eat aphids and the ground beetles, they will come. They will eat many uh, cutworms and many kinds of uh, bugs that crawl on the ground. Um, the, the fly, the wasp, He's carnivorous. He will sting many flies and things like that in your in your garden. Again, this guy loves to eat aphids. So there's many, many different kinds of bugs that are good for your garden. If you see a bug in your garden, don't go kill it. Maybe leave, leave it alone. It's maybe a good bug, right? Find out what it is before you kill a bug. Well, I'm a king bee. Okay, that's Buzzing it. Happy eye. World Bee Day. I hope you go love a bee. You go to live worksheets and uh, try the exercise there. Try the uh, worksheet on World Bee Day. See you later. I read the e.